Using the My Bedroom Working file, we're going to explore grouping your tasks as opposed to filtering them. Filtering them allows you to filter away some of the tasks so you're only looking at a selection. Grouping them allows you to lump your tasks together based on a set criteria. Now at the moment, they are effectively lumped together by their project summary. So we see them in order of their project summary. So empty the room is a project summary. And we see the tasks involved with emptying the room and then prep room and then furniture and then the party further on. Now we can change that grouping based on various set criteria by going to the little drop down arrow, which is where we've been for the sorting and it's where we've been for the filtering. So it's the same location. Come down to group by and you'll see there's a little pop out option of groups. Now we could choose status, for example, for our task names. And you see we then get grouped by status complete and we see all the tasks that are complete. Status late and we see all the tasks that are late. Status future tasks and we see all the future tasks. Now these little groupings are also marked on the Gantt chart. So you can see an area there, status complete, status late. Now it hasn't really affected the chronological display within our Gantt chart. We still go top left to bottom right, but that's really more by chance than anything. If I choose a different group, so I come down to drop list, no group, and then go back in and choose group by, let's say for example, duration. Then you can see the Gantt chart itself goes a little crazy with arrows going upwards, backwards, forwards, and sideways, and it's not top left to bottom right. But on the task side, we are then grouped by the duration. And see, these are ones that are no days, so effectively milestones. 0.02 days, 0.04 days, 0.5, 0.75, and all the way up to five day duration. So everything is grouped by its duration. Or well, we can change that and go by priority. So we saw earlier how we can set and change the priorities for various tasks. And now in the grouping, we can see how that could be useful. These are all the tasks in the 200 to 299. So there's one, 300 to 399, there are three. And then the bulk are in 500 to 599, with a few more that are effectively high priority. But again, installing this kind of grouping is great to view them, but doesn't make the Gantt chart very usable or very pretty. You'll also notice the task ID stay with the task when we group, just as they do when we filter. And now they are not in order but at least they retain the same task number. So we can go back to the drop down and choose no group. Now the grouping option is on all the little drop downs, so we could do with duration, group by, and you'll see it's only got two options, group by the duration or group by weeks. So if I choose weeks, then we see everything that is effectively a week or less, and then everything that's a week or more, which is one thing. These groups are compressible using the little triangle, so you can apply a grouping and then hide the groups that you're not interested in. So in the duration drop down, let's change that to no group. In the start drop down and the same for the finish, the group by options are date dividers really. So you can do it by the actual date, by months, by weeks, by quarters or by years. Well, ours is a fairly short project. So I'm going to choose weeks. And there we can see everything is broken down into the week that it occurs. Which keeps things fairly nice and top left to bottom right because we're working chronologically. But what it does do is allow me to then hide weeks at a time so I can look at this particular week or next week and plan ahead and see what's supposed to be happening and see if it is actually going to happen. So that's both on the start and on the finish drop down. So again, no group takes you back to the default of none of this special grouping. Now you can also access the grouping options on the view ribbon. And you can see here the option for no group because we're not grouped at the moment. But in the drop down, we can see all the same choices that we saw in the little drop down arrow here. If I then click into the date column and go to this drop down, you can see that it does not respond to different options. Those specific options are in the drop down for each column. These options are specific to grouping the whole task pane effectively. So we could choose priority as we did before, and you can see it does the same thing as it did when we chose it off the drop list. Or we can go no group. Now you can add your own groups if the ones that are built in are not sufficient. We could come down to new group by. 
And in here, you can choose one of the many fields that's already built in to Microsoft Project. So we've got active, actual cost, actual duration, actual finish, actual overtime, all the way down to baseline. Baselines we've yet to cover. And you can see there's quite a few options within baselines. Constraints, costs, critical, other dates, duration, finish, flags. Lots and lots of other fields. This effectively is the total field list for Microsoft Project. So let's go back and just choose actual cost. Within my little group definition, I'm choosing task as the type to group by, and it's in ascending order. I can even control the font and color, and then we'll save. And that little list is here as group two. So if I choose group two, you can see it then groups them by actual cost. And because nothing is costed yet, everything is in a zero section. But the group is working, and we can go back to no group to remove them. So the groups are accessed through either the little drop down here, and some of these are specific groups for that particular column. Or you can come to the view ribbon, and then the group section is visible here to choose from. You'll also notice that the sorting and the filtering options are also on this same little group called data within the view ribbon.